Now, if you haven't already, it'd be a mighty fine good idea for you to check out my previous video on toxic femininity. So what I decided to do was, because I can talk about each of these topics very succinctly and thoroughly, may as well combine them all into one video. Instead of talking about where toxic femininity and toxic masculinity comes from separately, may as well do it all in one take. Or one video at the very least. So let's talk about it. Let's start off with this first. Let's start off with a definition. How do you say? Of toxic masculinity. And I think one person who gave us probably the most succinct definition of toxic masculinity will ever get ever is actually a Lindsay Ellis, the nostalgia chick. I like Lindsay Ellis. I don't always agree with her. But I like her. I'd make babies with her. Assuming that she doesn't get an abortion and kill that baby. Anyhow, this is their definition for toxic masculinity. And because I think it's so succinct, I'm going to use it. Here's what she has to say. I see a lot of confusion over this term. Like, people hear the term toxic masculinity and they just think it means that being a man is bad. Which... Seems like the most common point of contention is not the underlying concept, but the term itself. I have single-handedly vanquished the beast! So if you don't like the term toxic masculinity, why don't you call it, I don't know, detrimental dickwagging, or patriarchy frown frowns, or machismo no bueno, whatever. For now, toxic masculinity is the term we have, so that's the one I'm going to use. When we talk about toxic masculinity, the simplest way to describe it is men feeling the need to prove their perceived masculinity through unhealthy means, harmful to others, but just as often, harmful to themselves. These toxic elements are attached to attributes we as a culture tend to attach to masculinity, including, but not limited to, anger, being the strongest, ponage, Eschewing emotional attachment. Need a hug? We're not a hugging family. Damn straight. Toxic masculinity eschews attributes associated with femininity. Things like emotional vulnerability, crying, giving a shit about other people, and flowers. I say associated with because obviously everyone has all of these things in them. Women get angry and men like flowers. So the fact that little boys are taught from a very young age that they're not allowed to cry or that expressing emotion is unmanly. Is that what you've been filling your head with, boy? Sentiment! That is a part of toxic masculinity. So, since you gave us such a succinct definition for toxic masculinity, I think it might be an okay thing to make the definition for toxic femininity, um, extreme often detrimental traits that usually are for the favor of the woman at the expense for men. I think that's pretty good, or at the expense of others. I think it's a pretty good definition for toxic femininity. If not, just take toxic masculinity and then, I don't know, switch the genders and there you go. That'll be our working definition. So, the subject of today's video is where does toxic masculinity and toxic femininity come from? A lot of feminists talk about why toxic masculinity is bad and how it all, you know, they cause all of the frowny faces, but they don't really dissect it as a concept and really break down why it's a thing and how we can change it. And since I'm the only person to my knowledge that has talked about toxic femininity, I guess it's my job to do the same exact thing. And considering the fact that toxic masculinity and toxic femininity, although their behaviors are different, actually stem from the same exact thing. And so we're not here all too long, I will tell you my friends, toxic masculinity and toxic femininity actually, simply, clear and simple, is just the most extreme form of trying to attract the opposite sex there is. You do not believe me, my friend. You think this be too simple. Well, you do not understand. I will explain to you. Think about all of the behaviors given to us that are considered toxically masculine. Um, the bravado. Of a lot of men. Um, the, the, the puffing of your chest, the peacocking, um, the complete and total disregard uh, for other people's feelings, or the disregard of your own feelings and trying to be really stoic and not care. Never cry because boys don't cry. All the different things that are chatted to us that I'm sure you can think of yourself coming from, you know, 
an individual who's watched the video from a feminist before, or just, you know, your colloquial understanding of toxic masculinity, I'm pretty sure you can t t throw out a couple of more different traits that feminists describe to toxic masculinity. But the thing you'll notice about them all is that, interestingly enough, they're all traits that women like. Think about it for a second. The idea of being really arrogant and uh, having a lot of bravado or braggadocio uh, that feminists despise actually stems from the idea that women like confidence. And women themselves will constantly explain that they like confidence. Because they do. I don't think very many people would disagree with that, eh? So because most people will not disagree with that, I'm not going to spend any time disputing it. The extreme form of what I am saying of having arrogance and braggadocio is, well, confidence being way too sure of yourself. Here's another thing. Uh, don't cry. Boys don't cry. Not showing your emotions, not showing your weakness. Again, women are not very fond of weak or emotional men. A lot of women won't say that to you, but if you pay attention to them and you listen to them talk, you can pretty much figure out that they're not really big fans of really emotional men. They're not really even fans of slightly emotional men. Like a woman, if you uh, tell a woman how you feel about something, yeah, she'll never not be your friend. Like she'll, There'll never be a woman in this world who will like, listen to a guy explain his problems and be like, yeah, don't be my friend, bitch-ass nigga. As far as you dating her, yeah, it's seldom a woman that you can open up to emotionally that will still try to have sex with you because women are not fans of vulnerable men. So, again, it's extreme form, which is toxic masculinity, the extreme form of understanding that women don't like emotional men is pretending that you don't have emotions and never showing weakness and only being angry. Because, again, in the most extreme form, women like aggressive men that can protect them. If you are extremely showing that you're angry and ready to fight all the time, which feminists will deem as toxically masculine, you can see that, once again, this is just them trying to attract women in the most extreme form they can. And I'm pretty sure I can keep going on, but I hope you get the point. And toxic femininity, as I've described in my previous video, is exactly the same way. Being a woman, you don't really have to do anything other than be to get a man to pay attention to you. You just kind of have to exist, and some guy somewhere will try to have sex with you. But if you're an attractive woman, then you realize at a visceral level that there are other women who are indeed attractive and thus you have to find some way to separate yourself from them. How do you do it? Well there's numerous ways you can do that. Makeup is one but you can get fake breasts that are really big and show them off a lot or you can get a big butt and since it's really hard to show off a big butt in anything I'm sure it's hard to not show off a big butt in anything. Well there you go now you've separated yourself off from the rest of the women. These are two pretty extreme examples of what I mean when I say trying to attract men. Because, you know, women, they, they know men like looking at them sexually. So getting plastic surgery or wearing lots of makeup or wearing high heels is them doing in the most extreme way, accentuating their physical beauty to gain more attention from men. Uh, what else is there, my friends? Um, I actually, now that I think about it, when it comes to toxic uh, femininity, Saying that it's one of the most extreme forms of trying to attract men only really accounts for women focusing way too much on the way they look, them being incredibly shallow, and them kind of having a bit of an arms race to be the most attractive lady in the room or on the internet. Um, to go deeper into why you would have, say, the selfishly attractive, I'm sorry, the selfish form of a toxic community, which is, say, gold digging, would stem from an extreme form of her hypergamous instinct, which... Again, uh, it's related to her ability to attract men, but not quite exactly. What I mean by that is um, it's all related to the idea of, you know, the opposite sex and its extreme instinct being taken. I mean, I'm sorry, an instinct taken to its logical extreme, but it's not really about getting men to pay attention to you. So what I mean by that is being a gold digger is the most extreme form of which a woman can be hypergamous. Simply looking at the man only to obtain his resources parasitically um, and not using it in order to procure a nest for her children or you know, a, a house or place for her children to be, grow up and be 
protected. And because of this, you know, whenever a woman removes, you know, having children as a very important part of her life, the instinct of hypergamy remains because it's an instinct. It's not going anywhere. When that's gone, the only thing you have left is yourself. And this is how women become very materialistic because they're not thinking about the most important thing they have to offer to society. And as a lady, that might hurt your feelings, but it is the most important thing you can offer to society. You make people. And that's not something to shake a stick at sideways, by the way. Like, a lot of women really have a total disregard for, like, being able to carry people and make people. But it it really isn't. I don't really know why you you can't accept as a woman that this is a fucking fantastic thing and you should appreciate the fact that you have the ability to do so. I don't really know how else I can talk this up, but you make fucking people. I don't... Or at least you hold people so they can be made inside of you. That's the life can't continue without you. That that's kind of one of the highest honors you can get. I mean, I don't really see how you can make fun of a conservative for saying when well, they want women barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. I mean, sure you might not be running a billion dollar industry, but you make people. I mean, fuck. Like what? What more can you ask for? Like, I don't know. I, this might. This is turning into a rant about birthing children. That's not important. I'll talk about that some other time. But the point is, when you disconnect that, the only thing that's left again, as I said, are the selfish desires and the instinct of hypergamy. So women still want things because their instincts are still telling them, I need a man that has money and things. But because they can't, re I'm sorry, because they can't allocate those resources to something more productive, which is a home and things for their children to grow up and be protected in, it's all just kind of breaks down to material things where they can get more status to feel good about themselves because that's all that remains. The only thing that can remain when you have an hypergamous instinct is just your self-esteem and your narcissism and trying to make yourself look better than what you actually are. Which again leads us to the earlier form of toxic femininity, which is trying to appear to be more beautiful than what you actually are as a woman or trying to accentuate your sexual parts as a woman to gain more attention from men so you can get more things. It's a really big feedback loop, uh, truly. So toxic femininity is a little bit more complex or um, there's a little bit more breaking down of each individual aspect of toxic femininity than there is toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity can very clearly and succinctly be explained as the most extreme form of men trying to attract women by bumming up all of the traits that are supposed to attract women to the 10th degree and maybe even cranking that up past 11. Women on the other hand, a lot of toxic femininity stems from becoming very selfish because there's a disconnect between what they should be using their hypergamy for, which is creating an environment for their children, and focusing that hypergamy only on material things that they can get for themselves. This is also, um, toxic femininity is also the same way as toxic masculinity, so far as they are women who are trying their damnedest, or it's the most extreme form of trying to attract men to them by accentuating their looks and their physical attractiveness, because that's kind of really the only thing women can do to get men. Women can really just kind of be, and it doesn't mean that being will get you a stable functioning relationship, like not at all. But being as a woman does mean that there's a huge chance that you can reproduce, assuming you're not like an incredibly ugly person. And even then, like you have to be incredibly decrepit, like incredibly ugly, like incredibly so to to not be able to get a man to try to have sex with you. Either that or you have to be so obtuse as to never realize when a man is trying to date you. So you have to be um, seriously autistic. And I'm not saying that as an insult, but like you have to genuinely be autistic to not realize when a guy is trying to have sex with you. Um, so, well, I'm sure there's more I can talk about in this video. I don't really think that I've kind of got my point across. I might make follow-ups and maybe I might go into a little bit more detail in that comment section, but I think you guys get the point here. Toxic masculinity as a concept and toxic femininity as a concept are things I can acknowledge exist and are things I can accept exist. Um, Lindsay Ellis is right. A lot of people do use toxic masculinity or a lot of people interpret toxic masculinity as saying that being a man is toxic and bad. That is not how feminists use toxic masculinity. However, the importance or the what it should be important about toxic masculinity is why it's a thing. Toxic masculinity is a thing because it's about men trying to attract women in its most extreme way. 
How do you curtail that? I would say, well, it's a strong, healthy father figure. Not necessarily your actual father, though preferred, but someone that can give you a good concept of what it means to be a man and what it means to attract a woman of quality. And I would say the same thing goes for a lot of women. For women, on the other hand, it's going to look different. One, women have to understand what their hypergamist instincts are for, which is procuring a stable environment for your children. And they also have to understand that being attractive only means people want to have sex with you. It's not a really good indication of your value or worth to society or even your value or worth to any other person. Considering that being an attractive woman only just means people want to have sex with you. That is kind of literally, it only begins and ends there. And while it's true being attractive gives you lots of things, people are only giving you things that they want to have sex with you. And unless you're an incredibly manipulative person, well, not really even incredibly so, but manipulative nonetheless, that's the only thing you're ever going to get. You're only going to be able to string people along, and that's just going to frustrate people, and people are just going to end up disliking you because you're not, you know, reciprocating anything. And while I acknowledge that no woman has any obligation to have sex with anyone, it doesn't mean that it's not any less frustrating and it won't cause problems in your life. So it is still important to bring up and chat about. So like I said, I can go into more detail later, but the solutions are, one, women have to understand that being attractive, even if you're not an attractive woman, well, you're, you're probably attracted to someone, but even if you don't feel attractive, um, again, that's not, you know, the basis of your worth should not be there. And as a man, you have to realize that there are multiple ways of being a really good, strong, honorable man, and basing all of your self-worth on your ability to obtain women is just not good and not healthy at all. So with that being said, man, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, man, Go ahead and click the like button. And yeah, shoot, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.